Hope everybody's doing well. Starting with the uh, win over Virginia Tech, yeah, another great uh, road win for the team. Two straight road wins on uh, senior day and, and two difficult places to win. Um, proud of our team, proud of our staff. Virginia Tech uh, has a really, really impressive game day atmosphere. And uh, first time I've seen it with, with the crowd, last time I was there was COVID. And uh, it, it was definitely as advertised. Uh, really, really good atmosphere. Our goal was to try to get the 65,632 people to be quiet. And <laughs> we did that. And uh, guys did a great job executing. And uh, the demeanor that our kids played with <clears throat> was very aggressive. Uh, we were very efficient. And uh, I was really proud of, of how we came out and played that first half in particular. I thought uh, offensively, we were physical, uh, pr protected Brennan well against a good defensive front, had a lot of sacks going into the game, only gave up one. We had over 200 yards rushing um, until the last three plays where we were just milking out the clock. But we were very efficient and explosive, uh, 13 explosive plays in the game. So that was the most we had all season. And in the first half, our defense was stellar with the exception of the reverse that we gave up after the kickoff return. And that was disappointing. We had a blitz call that should have hit that in the backfield and just didn't execute. <clears throat> um, you know, offensively overall to score five touchdowns, long, efficient drives, five of five in the red zone, or four of four, excuse me, in the red zone, four touchdowns, zero turnovers on 80 plays is hard to do against a good defense. I thought our two-minute drive um, right before the half, the score to KC, and then to open the, the third quarter with another touchdown drive, that 14-point swing in the game uh, was really important. We were very efficient running the football. You know, just individually, I thought, you know, KC obviously accounted for three touchdowns. And uh, Brennan, two running, two passing. Uh, and Brennan and KC, Penix were explosive players in the game. I thought Keon and, and Bradley Rosner, Dakari Collins played really hard at receiver, front side and back side, straining for us in the run game, making plays and getting yards after the catch. Both tailbacks, Delbert Mims and Kendrick Raphael, ran hard, protected the uh, quarterback and protected the football. And, you know, I thought uh, Jordan Poole and Isaiah Shirley made a significant difference in the run game. The offensive line battled and uh, did a really nice job, like I said, playing against a good D-line. You know, areas we can improve, you know, the three pre-snap penalties. Uh, one was a delay game, two false starts. Set us back. We had one drop. Um, but it was a good football game for our offense. You know, on defense, like I said, really good first half. Uh, the one interception in the second half by Bishop Fitzgerald was a great play. You know, I thought we defended their tailback and quarterback run game very well. You know, the couple of the quarterback runs were on third and extra long QB draws where they didn't get first downs. The one reverse was the explosive. And uh, I thought Savion and, and Peyton played exceptional. We dominated on third down. I think we were over 85% effective on third down. Um, and it had the one fourth down stop in the red zone, which is like a takeaway. You know, negatives, we had the one um, false start on defense, jumped off sides on a fourth and long, and it just gave up too many explosive plays. You know, the one deep ball, um, which got him going, and then just got into kind of prevent with the three-score lead there and uh, kind of bled him out. But I know that was frustrating for Coach Gibson, really not his style. But uh, defense will be salty this week. They're excited to play, and I thought it was a good team win. Um, our special teams, I thought we did a nice job pressuring our punter, disappointed. You know, we didn't block a punt. We had two opportunities. We were right there. And Coach Goble did a great job scheming those up. We need to finish those plays. Um, we did give up a kickoff return to the 50, and that's not characteristic of us and definitely something we need to fix and will. And now on to uh, our rival UNC, great rivalry game, oldest in the ACC, always uh, hard-fought, emotional, one possession, physical game, and it's senior day for us and a great honor. <clears throat> You've heard me talk about this before, but uh, as a head coach, something I take really personal. Um, 
to be in that tunnel with them the last time for those guys that are true seniors with no eligibility left. And uh, 11 guys fit that bill for us this year that are out of eligibility, you know, walking um, out on the field with them one last time, letting them go out there and be with their parents and uh, excited. There will be a handful of guys out there that um, still have the COVID year or one year left, I guess you'd say. We're still in that maybe two more years where guys have an extra year. So you'll see some guys that aren't seniors out there that, you know, have to decide if they're going pro or coming back, those kind of things. But we'll allow them, obviously, the opportunity in case they do decide to go pro. Um, but senior day is important, you know, and, and guys like um, Peyton Wilson, you know, for him, uh, it's going to be an emotional day. Guys like that that have been through a lot and these guys have a lot of stories. Derek Eason, guys that have been here a long time. It's a great group of young men um, that sacrificed a lot for our program and have done great things. Uh, one of the stats I saw after this last win was it's the only – football team in NC State history that's had four straight eight plus win seasons and so a lot of these seniors are part of those those games and those wins um we talk about UNC you know obviously a very explosive offense uh, they're balanced uh, play with tempo they're up tempo team averaging over 75 snaps a game and they're at the top one or two or three in almost every category on offense and Drake May is a, a terrific competitor Good athlete can run, um, stands tall in the pocket, sees the field, throws every ball that you'd want him to throw. Uh, running back, Hampton's playing really well for them. One of the top rushers in the country and, and leads the conference and rushing physical back. Uh, a bunch of receivers to throw the football to, tight ends. And um, you can see why they score a lot of points. You know, on defense, they're getting takeaways. Uh, they have a big front. Their linebackers run well. Uh, their defensive end, Rucker, leads them in sacks and TFLs. Um, linebacker Gray, again, leads them in tackles. He's been there a while, uh, and it plays really hard for him. And their safety, uh, Chapman, makes a lot of plays, does a good job. And they're where they're supposed to be. They're well coached. And, and uh, you know, it's one of those games where records and stats, even though this is a pretty evenly matched game when it comes to those things, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, it's a rivalry game. and. Love playing in them. Um, UNC's done a really good job this year with their turnover margin. They're tied for first in our league with plus 10. And, you know, anytime you can be in that area, we're plus eight, they're plus 10. Uh, you're going to be in a lot of games and win a lot of games, which both teams have. Uh, so we're excited, you know, for the opportunity and the challenge to continue the journey one more week here in the regular season. It's also uh, Thanksgiving. And so, you know, great week for all of us to, be thankful and, and take some time, you know, to reach out to the people that have made a difference in our lives and, and that we love. Um, one last thing before I open it up, just, you know, for our students and fans, I know it is Thanksgiving break and I and, uh, hope you all have safe trips home if you're going home or if your family's coming in that they make it safely. But uh, please make sure that doesn't deter you from being at the game Saturday night. We need our fans in the house, packing the Carter, wearing red, supporting this senior class that's worked really, really hard uh, and being a factor for us when our defense is on the field and their offense. Make it hard for them to hear. Um, we need you to be students of the game that way in this one with your your volume. Uh, when their offense is on the field and our defense is out there, you need to be our 12th man. And you've done that for us various times throughout this season. And I'm asking for that favor here in, in the last game uh, at home of this season. So with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Corey. Dave, uh, has there been any update at this point on, on Brennan Armstrong? I know he was uh, seemed to be hurt after the last play of the game, and we were told he was getting treatment afterwards, but just any status on him at this point? Yeah, he's doing good. He was sore. I mean, he ran for over 100 yards, and but, you know, he took every snap in the game. He was just sore, and wanted to get him the treatment that he needed, but no, he's good. And like anybody that plays physical football, you're going to feel it sometimes after a game. We just wanted to make sure we did all the right things for him. James? And as a follow-up to that, what is – I was going to – can I ask a follow-up? Sorry. Go ahead, Corey. What is his – okay. What is his physicality and his running style meant to this team 
over these last several weeks as well. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if I can put it in words. You know, I think uh, you want to play for a guy like that, man. It, it's He's got heart. He's tough. He creates plays when they're not there. And then the plays that we ask him to run, he runs them phys- uh, in a physical way. I think it definitely – uh, gets the guys blocking for him excited. You know, they know that he's going to be straining really hard. It inspires them to do the same. And it sets just a standard of play, like how hard you should be playing this game. And he's having fun out there, man. And that's the thing that, you know, I think is also contagious is just how much he's enjoying playing the game. James? Yeah, Dave, you've talked about uh, Coach Anai's ability to to kind of call plays on top of plays before in the past. Just when you watched back this matchup against Virginia Tech, did you feel like that was really on display in this game? Yeah, Coach does a really nice job, um, not only in game, but looking at what he's called through the season and knowing how he might have set some things up off of some of the tendencies he has. And, and then in game, seeing how they react on a certain play and knowing that, hey, this play is now set up. Um, He's been doing it a while. He's got a good feel for it. And uh, there's a, a Rolodex, like I've talked about, a, a deep Rolodex of plays that he'll just bring some plays out. And, you know, a lot of them are very unique. And so it's it's pretty amazing to me how quickly he can get the guys to go out there and function as fast as they do with some of the stuff that if you were on defense, you're like, I haven't seen that before, you know, and with some of the shifts and motions and, I don't know what you call it, but it's uh, it's definitely Roberts spinning the dial. You know, that's what he does. And and I thought he really called a good game uh, at Virginia Tech. Thanks. Michael. Coach Mike Waddell for the North Carolina Sports Network. Could you speak to the culture of your program as you built it over this last decade and how that resonates with the results that you're experiencing on the field, especially in the late part of a season. Yeah, I think, you know, persistence, perseverance, perseverance, uh, resiliency, grit, all those characteristics uh, early on were really, really deep and thick in this thing. And uh, the guys that helped me build it early on, they hung in there through some tough things and grew up in those early recruiting classes. A lot of the guys now you're enjoying watching playing the NFL. They were a part of their blood is in the bricks here, as you say, but helping me build it. And and D'Antonio Burnett's been here the whole time. And I think that that's just that hard, tough together uh, identity that we embrace here. That's when you lean in, you know, is when there's adversity. That, that's where you have to really look at who you are. And, and if you have something that, you're really true to, uh, and for us, it's that, it's perseverance. Uh, it's it's adversity, understanding, you know, it's part of life and looking forward to an opportunity to overcome uh, and knowing that failure is not permanent uh, unless you make it that way, you know. Uh, I embrace challenges, and, and I think that's one style of leadership that some people have. I, I embrace that, you know, when I have something that somebody says is going to be hard, it kind of makes me want to do it more. And um, so – I think everything starts with me. And, and if I'm going to showcase that kind of leadership, then my assistants are going to do the same and my players are going to feed off of that. And when you do that for 11 years, I think it just ruminates, you know? And so one thing that I haven't done is, is change that part of who I am. You know, there's other parts that has, have definitely evolved in me as a coach. I've learned a lot along the way, but I have not changed that, you know, was, uh, I'm not going to quit and I'm going to work hard and I'm going to look at adversity as an opportunity. Noah. You mentioned Brennan just being like the ultimate teammate and, and going through what he did over the last month. How did you kind of see that rub off on other guys in the offense? It seemed like, you know, Dakari Collins and Bradley Rosner haven't played much recently, but at Virginia Tech, they both, you know, had pretty big impacts. Yeah, well, I think he showcased what uh, leadership um, looks like. You know, I asked the players from time to time, are, are you being the teammate that you want your teammates to be? And I think – there's no question that Brennan does that. And he did that in a very difficult time. And people saw that, you know, and how he spoke up to the offense for them to play hard. Um, 
for MJ when he became the starter said a lot about who he was character wise and then how he just kept practicing and serving guys on the team and then when he got opportunities to go in the game and how he performed how hard he ran uh, I think it really showcased who he is as a human being and, and there's a lot of respect in that from our team and our staff as far as Dakari and, and Bradley um, there's been several receivers that have worked their way up Anthony Smith's another one um, that at the beginning of the year they weren't getting a lot of time and they just kept working you know and Sure, they want to play more and this and that, but they also understand if they do the right things over and over and over that they're going to be rewarded, and they were. And then when they went in, they made plays. Uh, you know, Dakari started last game. He'll start again this week, and we're excited. He's just got to stay one day at a time, you know, in the process of getting better. And I told him the other day I'm proud of him. He just, he just needs to stay in that one day at a time place. And um it's going to be fun, you know, to get out there and compete with these guys this week. And hopefully there'll be more of that. Just, you know, guys continuing to fight. Ethan. And coach, when you have transfers like Bradley and Dakari or, you know, freshmen like Casey contributing, and this is their first time playing against UNC, what do you do or say to just emphasize how important this game is to this program? Yeah, I don't think I need to say a lot. Um, I set the stage Sunday in the team meeting, you do a little history lesson. You talk about your opponent and kind of lay out what it's going to look like for the week. And so they know, and uh, Casey knew before he came here, I think, but uh, they definitely know. And the stage is set. Now it's just go out and do what you do. Like the reason we've won four in a row is because we've embraced the process of practicing and preparing. Uh, and we need to do that again. It doesn't matter if we're playing our rival. We're not playing our rival. You're not going to win any games if you don't prepare and practice the right way. And so this game has a lot of ulterior things with senior day, rivalry week, rankings, bowl placements, you know, everything. Um, but I just want to beat UNC, and that's what they want to do. And how do you do that? You have a great Tuesday practice, you know, and then you have a great Wednesday and a great Thursday. And, and that's the recipe for winning for us. And so we're going to try to stay engaged in that. Andrea. Uh, Dave, I know you've had some really talented and good teams at NC State, but given where you were headed into the open date, do you feel like this is the best coaching job that you've done? Well, I think I'd have to let you guys tell me that. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think – there's been years where we, we've probably got more out of our talent than other years, um, for sure. But I do think the response that we've had since the bye week has been uh, elite, for sure. Um, but, you know, you guys get a vote on who these coaches of the year are at the end of the year. And for me, it's just show up and do the best that I can. And if I'm rewarded for it, then that's great. And if I'm not, I'm going to keep doing my job. And I just am super proud of how the guys responded after Duke and hope we can finish it. JC? You mentioned Coach Thunder earlier. Do you kind of look at it as a, a three-part process with a high school recruit that you recruit them, then they do the strength and conditioning program, and then they get coached up? And that recruit should be very smart about how much it can change from when they're 18 to when they're 22. Yeah, I mean, I think the developmental piece is one of the strengths of our football program. Uh, Thunder has a, a deep part of that. And uh, the evaluation piece on what we look for um, in body types, what we look for in length, speed, athleticism, and then their intrinsic makeup. Um, and there's measurables that go into that and work ethic and, and live evaluations. Lots of time spent getting to know young people uh, and who they come from. And then, man, just doing all the right things, you know, the training uh, with coach and how he does things down there and how he explains things. Our nutrition staff, Natalie Foston, uh, does such a great job. Justin Smith, our sports med, and his staff do such a great job. So, like, there's all these different people. And then you have Coach Ruffin and myself and, and Freddie autry Lindsay, you know, teaching the – the culture of our program from the young guys up to the top. Um, so we're trying to grow them in every way, 
you know, and, and I think all of those things matter in their maturation and 18 to 22 is the greatest growth cycle they're going to have. Um, so we're trying to max out that window, you know, trying to max it out and we can't do it without them. They have to be a part of the recipe. You know, the, the, the guy that comes in here and does everything you ask him to do, the Thayer Thomas, the Drake Thomas, those kind of guys, you see them go fast as far as how they can perform. And then there's other guys that take their time and figuring out how hard it's going to be. And they're a bit, a little bit later to come on the scene sometimes. So, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Each kid that you bring in, you don't know like which freshman is going to impact the team the most, who's going to have the biggest, you know, change like James Smith Williams, 195 to 270 and running a four or five at the combine. Like, wow. What a, what a change, you know, and starting in the NFL. Couldn't have predicted that. Not that he could, would, wouldn't think that he'd be an NFL player, but some of the body changes that Thunder has been a part of down there has been amazing. Uh, Mike? Coach, how much does this game against your rival North Carolina and North Carolina's rival NC State mean to, mean to your program in terms of recruiting and how much is the game itself a punctuation mark to that process? Well, you know, bragging rights are real. It's great when you win a rivalry game, you go out on the road and, you know, as a coach, you got your chest out and all those kind of things. Um, I'm not necessarily sure it, it changes who we get all the time. I think these kids, that's a piece, but there's a million pieces in the decision. You know, there might be an exclamation point sometimes, but, a lot of these guys um, come to campus multiple, multiple, multiple times. And it's, there's a million parts of this equation that goes into why they pick us or them or whatever school they're picking. The rivalry is very meaningful to the fan base, to the alumni, um, to the coaches, current, um, current players, former players, all those things. And yeah, I mean, that's what makes rivalry we, we great in college football, man. All these teams you're seeing them. And, and every rivalry I've been at, uh, been a part of, it's the same way. It's just great pageantry, and it's one of my favorite weeks in college sports. Noah? You've talked, you know, previously about the impact that Peyton has on the defense in all sorts of, you know, ways. Is there any player or anything that you've seen, you know, anyone else be able to do it? Or is he kind of like, you know, you know a unicorn in that sense of being able to be this impactful on a team's defense? Are you talking about that we played against or? No, Peyton, about him and, and how much, you know, impact he has on this team. Yeah, it can be played against or just, you know, at NC State or from your career in a whole. Well, I mean, Peyton's impact is felt. I mean, he was out there 47 plays and, I mean, he's in on almost every play somewhere, you know. He's around the pile if he's not in the pile. And he's uh, playing as hard as anybody. He's running guys down and. He's, his impact is massive, and it's felt on the sideline, you know, and not just when he's over there in the huddle with the defense. When the offense is out there, he's cheering them on. He'll run up to the special teams ready area and, and say things to guys in the huddle there about, what, you know, going down on a kickoff. So in the locker room, he's talking. In the team room, he's talking. So his impact is huge, and, and he's a commander. You know, he's not just a leader. Like, he has that command presence in front of a team. When he speaks, they listen to him. And he's earned that. And so it's meaningful when he talks. I can't really speak for other teams because I don't get to see all the auxiliary things, you know, that, that are going on. There's a lot of good players in our league that that impact games. Um, I would say there's not many in the country that impact what uh, the game the way that number 11 is right now for us. Jaden. Yeah, Dave, does having players who were, you know, highly recruited by Carolina and ended up coming to state or, you know, they flip commitments or whatever, does that at all, like, make this rivalry game, like, more special at all? I'm sure it does. You know, it's fanfare. Um, it's message board talk. It's It's all that kind of stuff. You know, when you put the ball down, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's 11 guys against 11 guys <clears throat> trying to impose their will, you know, and two coaching staffs trying to outcoach each other. 
And none of that stuff means anything, you know. But leading up to the game, it, it's Monday. And, yeah, it must matter if we're getting asked questions about it, you know. But will it matter at the scoreboard? Probably not. James? <clears throat> Dave, you mentioned uh, discussing the history of this rivalry with your team. Has there been any common themes you can look back to over the years that have stood out for the winning teams kind of more often than not? Oh, that's a good question, man. There's been a lot of tight games, overtime games, last field goal kicks, uh, crazy comebacks. <clears throat> you got to finish. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, you got to finish. And it's not one of those games where you talk about playing four quarters I and mean, you talk about playing every second that they let you play the game as long as it takes. And I know both teams are going to fight and fight hard. And that's why it's a fun game. I mean, it's this one's had a lot of crazy endings, you know, crazy endings. So that's what makes them fun, man. You know, I know both teams have talented players, good coaches, rabid fans, and it's going to be a great Saturday night. Rob? Yes, sir. With this season's matchup, there's some uh, bowl leverage implications. The winner perhaps could get a more desirable bowl. Is that something you think about or discuss with your kids, or you just worry about the rivalry of game itself? No, it's something we talk about. You know, I mean, you always talk about what you're playing for, um, and then you go back to how do you get it, you know, and implications at the end of the year, you know, destinations are real. I mean, those are real carrots that you hang out there. And, you know, I don't know what we're being chosen between. A lot of it's out of our hands, you know, because you don't know if one of our teams is going to the playoffs or not and how that can shift the bull order in our league. So all you can do is control your own destiny by winning, and, and that puts you in the best place you can go. And so that's what we're going to try to do. At this point, you know, with eight wins or nine wins, both teams are going to have a good opportunity bowl-wise. Um but you, you know, give yourself maybe the best chance by winning this one. <clears throat> All right. That looks like that's it for today. All right, guys. Have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, everybody.